Okay, that was the Joint Probabilistic Data Association filter, which is based on merging multiple hypotheses using marginal association probabilities. Let's consider the same example as we did for GNN. We have two objects with scalar states. We have the same measurement model, motion model, and initial prior as we had in the GNN example. And for the visualization, we will again look at the marginal densities and the estimates. So at time zero, we have the initial marginal priors. We predict to time one, and we have some measurements, six of them illustrated by white circles. So in JPDA, we compute marginal association probabilities. Here, this is illustrated by making the measurements square if the association probability to any object is larger than 0 0.01. And by adjusting the color such that it's proportional to the colors used to illustrate the object. So on the left, we have two measurements with a non-negligible probability of association to object one. Object one is colored in blue. So these two measurements are blue and the one closer to the mean is a more intense blue because it has higher association probability than the other. And the four measurements on the right are colored similarly. So after the merged update, we get the posterior densities shown here. Next, we predict to time two. There are five measurements at time two. We compute the marginal association probabilities, and then we compute the merged update. So this illustrates the basic JPDA recursion. In each time step we predict, we compute the marginal association probabilities, and then we use them to perform a merged update. So here, we've illustrated the measurements and the posterior densities together with estimates and ground truth, just like we did for GNN. Top left, we have the measurements, and top right is the posterior densities shown as heat maps. So here we can see that in some time steps, a single measurement has a very high association probability. See, for example, for object two on the right at times three, four, and five. And in other time steps, there are multiple detections that share the association probability. For example, for object one on the left at time four, and on object two on the right at time one. And lastly, there are some time steps where the probability of misdetection is more or less equal to one. So we can see this for object one at times five and nine, and for object two at times six. In the bottom left, we show the posterior densities and estimates, again shown as black circles, and the black lines show the sequences of the estimates. So a comparison between the estimates and the ground truth is given in the bottom right. And as expected, the estimates are not perfect, again due to the measurement noise and the process noise, but the results are quite good. If we compare the results from GNN and from JPDA for these measurements, we see that the posterior densities and estimates from both filters are quite similar, although some differences can be seen. This does hold in general for GNN and JPDA. If the SNR is sufficiently high, then often there are not so large differences between the results from the two filters. If we take the same models, but consider a lower probability of detection equal to 0.5, then we get the JPDA results shown here. So the main difference now is that there are more missed detections. And one effect this has is that the posterior JPDA density that results from merging has a larger variance. If we compare the estimates and the ground truth shown in the bottom right, we see that even though the probability of detection is only 0.5, we still have quite good results. So let's compare again to the results that we had using GNN. In this case, we can actually see some significant differences. Comparing the posterior densities, we see that JPDA in general has a higher variance than what GNN does, especially after measurements that have been associated in GNN. And this is due to the fact that JPDA better captures that there is still a fairly large probability of misdetection. If we compare the estimates, we see that for this particular example, JPDA is quite a lot better than GNN. This is especially true for object one on the left, which has a larger error for GNN from time one to time eight, whereas JPDA has much smaller error for the same object and time steps. Now, this is just one particular scenario and one particular sequence of measurements. However, it does hold in general that when SNR is lower, for example, like here, where PD is lower, then JPDA often performs better than GNN. And the reason is that when SNR is lower, there are often multiple hypotheses with significant probability. 
and in this case, JPDA does a better approximation of the posterior density than what GNN does. As a last example, let's take the density approximation for the scenario with two objects, two measurements, minus 1.6 and 1, and a Gaussian prior. For JPDA, we get the results shown here. For all three values of PD, we can see that there is some difference between the exact posterior and the JPDA approximation. But in general, for this particular example, the approximation is fairly good. If we compare it to the GNN results, then we see that for these three examples, JPDA is slightly better, and this is especially true when PD is equal to 0.5. So let's conclude with some pros and cons for JPDA. In general, JPDA works better than GNN in scenarios with lower SNR. JPDA is still a fairly computationally cheap tracking algorithm, although the computational cost is a bit higher than GNN. It's also relatively simple to implement, although not quite as simple as GNN. One downside with JPDA is that it can give poor tracking results when the tracking scenario is complicated, for example, if the true objects are very close to each other.